Have you ever wondered why it is that your child is having trouble learning to talk? Well, this is you're not alone. There's lots of other parents who also struggle with this and trying to come to grips with why your child's having trouble with communication can be a really hard process and there's no simple answers. We know that every child is different and we know that there's lots of different things that can impact on communication development. But I thought I'd just take you through a couple of the key reasons today. Now, Keep in mind that the vast majority of children, we never actually figure out exactly why they're having trouble. But here are some of the common reasons why children might be having trouble. The first one is a limitation in hearing. So if they actually have hearing difficulties, even fluctuating hearing loss, what we call, um, uh, which is where they have a middle ear infection, where fluid builds up and then it drains away or even develops ultimately into glue ear, which is where there's a thick sort of um, or even sometimes hard uh, build up within the middle ear of, of junk left over from infections. Now um, this can definitely impact on their language development um, as well as their speech development. So uh, limitations in hearing are a really important one. One of the things that uh, most speech pathologists and speech therapists will routinely recommend is that every child who's having difficulty with their communication has a hearing test. The second one that I see quite often is slow muscle development. So these are children that have um, either low tone or are slow to develop specific uh, movements that they need. In And one of the things with particularly pronunciation is that you have to actually move those muscles in very controlled ways very quickly. So it is a really hard motor task. So that's something else that we see often. Um, we often see children that are just slow to learn new words and that's f from an understanding perspective so it actually takes them more repetitions to be able to uh, kind of get a word in their head and understand what it means and that's one that we really that we see a lot of and um, and so that's something to look for in your little one whether they're having trouble with their understanding some children we see sometimes have had less practice interacting with people now this is something that we see uh, more often now in children that are particularly motivated by technology where they actually aren't as driven to interact with people and because they have lots and lots of options now of activities that they can do without interacting with people it's a lot easier for these kids who are prone to that sort of difficulty to slip between the cracks because They've got lots of activities that they can do where they're happy and they're settled and they're enjoying themselves. Um, and particularly, I think we, as parents, sometimes we think that if we've given them an educational app or it's an educational program on TV, that we're doing them a favor, uh, when really that opportunity to interact and practice communication with people is really vital to their development. Flowing on from that, some children just have a personality type where they are just quite passive and they sort of let the world you know go on and do its thing around them and they aren't really phased by that these children often have a low motivation to actually learn to, to practice talking and so that makes it harder to, for these kids to actually learn those skills because they don't actually care as much <laughs> the other uh, one that we see are children where their nonverbal communication, so they're really good communicators with their face, with their body language, with their um, their eyes, for example. They can tell whole stories just by moving their uh, arms and um, and moving their face. Sometimes these kids who are really good nonverbal communicators, it works too well for them, and so they don't need words to be able to communicate. This is where the strategy of playing dumb and waiting is really, really important for these sorts of kids. Um, less often I see kids where um, the parents or the siblings talk for them. We, you do sometimes see it, but I think that it's uh, one that's recognised as being happening t more often than it really does. Uh, but it, you do sometimes see that as well. The one I see all the time though is where kids aren't actually given enough time to talk. You've got to remember that this is a new skill that your child's learning. They need a lot of processing time to work out which word they're going to say and how they're going to say it or if they're going to say it. So it's really, really important that you wait and give your child that time to be able to respond. So that's probably one that I see really like a lot I see it very frequently where they just 
um, adults just don't wait long enough to allow that processing time and for the child to respond. Another one that I see, and I'm, I'm probably seeing more often in the last couple of years, is overstimulation, where kids are just exposed to so much information that they don't know how to process it. So it's like, I, I guess you could say it's kind of like throwing you know, throwing half a dozen bean bags at your child and telling them to catch them. Uh, if you throw them all at once, it's going to be very hard for them to learn that skill. Whereas if you throw one ball at a time, um, they can learn to do it. So it's important that we provide the right kind of input for our child where it's at the right level for them to learn the skills that they need. Um, another problem that I see is um, what I call the drill skill talking. These are the kids that can rattle off the alphabet, can name colours, can count, but they just don't have enough real social language. They're not able to actually communicate their wants and needs even though they can label things and name numbers and colours. So that's one to look out for and I think it's particularly because there's so many resources that are designed at targeting kids um, naming letters, naming colours, naming numbers, and um, there's so many materials out there that we think that that's actually helping our children to learn. And although it is something that they do need to learn, it's not the number one communication skill and it certainly isn't the foundation for good oral language. So um, just watch out for that and don't, don't get too hung up if, that's, if your child doesn't have those skills. It's more important that they've actually got those communicative functions and language rather than um, that what I call the, the, the drill and skill um, vocabulary. Um, and, and the last one that I see is um, children who are sort of left to their own devices. So these are the kids that love their train set or, um, or really love Lego, for example, and they're just happy doing their thing, playing by themselves. It's really important that children have um, the opportunity to interact with other children and also with a variety of adults so that they can actually learn to negotiate and to um, play socially. So play skills are really, really important for communication development. And um, so that's another one to look out for as potentially contributing towards difficulties learning to talk. So I hope this has helped for you to understand and maybe you're starting to realise a couple of the things that might be impacting on your little one and why they're um, being a, a, taking a little bit longer to learn to talk. If you have, a, if any of these stood out to you, just pop a comment down in the comments below as to why it is that you think, what you think might be contributing to your child's talking difficulties. I look forward to seeing your comments and hearing why you think your child's having trouble. Okay, talk, eat, play and learn everybody. Until next time.